So at the BTOG meeting, we presented a poster um, consolidating our usefulness of uh, genotyping with NGS. Uh, a simple example is with EGFR genotyping. We looked at the outcomes of EGFR genotyping in our laboratory by NGS, and we clearly pick up the common mutations as you would do with a PCR-based assay like um, uh, Kyogen uh, P- uh, uh, QP- RT-PCR or Cobas or Idilla. But actually, with NGS-based EGFR analysis, we pick up many, many other variants, but specifically the exon 20 insertions. And this is really important because the PCR-based assays really do not pick up the full variety of uh, exon 20 insertions at all, and you can only detect them through NGS. This is really important because we have two drugs which are uh, near getting UK license. This is Emifentamab, uh, and um, Mervo Sertinib. Uh, I should say uh, NHS funding, uh, Mervo Sertinib and Amivantamab. And uh, when both of these have got core uh, NHS funding, it's absolutely critical that we can identify uh, these patients. Mervo Sertinib is available in the patient programme pre-licensed uh, and Amivantamab is licensed and is currently going through the uh, commissioning uh, process. If you're using a Cobas or Idilla assay, you're not going to pick up uh, these patients, and these patients are potentially going to get the wrong treatment, chemoimmunotherapy, uh, and potentially even worse, have uh, more morbidity for additional biopsies. So the key to all of this is NGS testing, DNA, and RNA. It really does help you work out what the right strategy is for your patients.